same rules and uh, you quoted uh, Harry Potter. I would like to quote another uh, work which says, a Lannister always pays his debts. <laughs> so the, the debt is owed, it shall be paid. But turning to the subject today, I uh, I, I saw that Professor Matteo would make an introduction in the remedies, and you spoke about uh, avoidance and damages per se. I wanted to uh, take a step back to discuss uh, something in the convention which I found uh, pretty interesting and quite fascinating actually, is the concept of liability. I'm not sure if you, if some, if you noticed that. I think most of people still present here are Romanian law uh, qualified, so they will probably think in terms of uh, contractual liability, respondere contractual, right? However, it's very funny that the CISG does not use the concept of contractual liability, and I actually search for it, and there is only two or three instances where they use the term liability, and actually it's a system that is focused on rem remedies. So while um, in a, let's say, a French-based Napoleonic, Napoleonic system, you would say, and what is the liability of the breaching party? I think in, in, in the CISG and the, uh, probably the common law, you would ask, what are the remedies of the infringe of the victim here, of the other party, right? So you look at the remedies for that. Um, why I find this very interesting is uh, that, I mean, you have all of the entire palette of remedies which basically are you either assert the contract or you avoid the contract, right? And then you have the general remedy of damages. And this is the place where I think the, the, the convention says um, you, uh, if you have an excuse, like Article 79, uh, force majeure, event outside of control. If you have an excuse, you are, uh, you can excuse yourself only from damages, but not from the other remedies. And all of the other remedies are available, right? Which basically means that termination or even substitution of the goods are not linked to any idea of fault or any idea of liability. They're just a remedy that, that comes across. So, Coming back to the problem with this year, uh, it has a very extensive uh, mutation of liability clause in, in, in many, uh, like in a cascade, you know, there are limits over limits. That actually makes sense. <clears throat> so even like this, this, this week I was working on a, a share purchase agreement governed by Moldova law in relating to some shares in a, in a Moldova bank. And the client who is a seller, so he's wanting to finally to exit and to make some cash, uh, tells me, well, let's say in the contract that um, our liability will be limited to 20% of the price. You know? And normally you would write that in the contract. The seller's liability is limited to 20% of the price. But then you ask the question, you know, in, a, in, a, in a dispute scenario, what does that really mean? What does that protect you from? Probably, if you use the term liability, you mean damages. But one thing to keep in mind, there's always a different, an alternative route. Because if, say, the purchaser finds a, a huge problem in, in the company, he, he wants to terminate the contract or avoidance in the terminology of the CISG, so then he has a claim for restitution and full repayment of the price. And will that Will that clause protect him? Probably not, because liability is usually linked to damages. Um, although I saw it, I saw something very interesting in the convention is that when when it discusses uh, defects, not conformity, right? It says seller is not liable for the for that nonconformity which buyer what have known, basically the the caveat. So, again, they use the word libel as in some sort of punishment on, 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 a, on, a, uh, on a 
seller, right? Or, or punishment on the buyer, and then the seller is exempted. However, I think they should have probably written in the CIG that a buyer does not have the remedy, any remedy, and cannot rely on a non-conformity uh, if um, he knew or ought to have known about that non-conformity. So he is basically deprived from all of the remedies. So that's one place where I think this older, old-fashioned concept of liability still is being used in the convention. Well, I am not liable for it, which I think means that they're blocking all of the possible remedies. Right? But in the end, uh, I, I, I think uh, I think in the problem, actually the clause is pretty good because it says uh, liability for damages, right? It only limits damages, which immediately means that it does not limit any other remedy. And the remedy sought in our case is um, substitution or repair. And we have seen there is a cap of what, 10 and sometimes 20 million in the clause in, the, in, the, in this year's problem. And some, some teams argue that if we uh, run to substitution, the cost would be over 20 million, right? So then there's this dilemma. Do we allow substitution knowing that this substitution will, uh, will lead to a cost over 20 million on a seller and thereby frustrate the whole purpose of the limitation of liability clause? Because when, and I, again, I'm coming back to my client, when he told me I want to limit my liability for 20%, he means that he wants to uh, deposit 20% of the price in some account, you know, for the liability period. But the 80% of the price, he just wants to spend it now. So, and he wants to feel safe that there's no way in the world that his 80% Will, will be clawed back from him by any legal means. But then if you just write a contract, my liability is limited to 20%, it's very likely this, this does not cover any other remedies, which in our case would be the remedy of substitution or repair, or in other cases would be termination and full refund of the price. So then he will have to spend the 80% of the price, but then he still have to pay it back, which should be very important. Um, it, he'll probably tell his lawyer, if I knew that, I would probably not have spent that, but the money is already spent, so what do I do next? Right. Yeah, you need a new lawyer to see, you know, there's this ad, a typical ad, you know, looking for a lawyer, first task, fire the old lawyer. No. So, yeah, all, uh, all in all, uh, this is uh, the, the what I wanted to touch upon in the system of remedies and how a limitation of liability clause can actually limit either all remedies or only damages. It, a lot of it depends on how you write it. And lawyers should be responsible and know these implied consequences of the choices they make for the clients. <laughs> so thank you very much. And um, I will then pass on uh, the floor to to, to continue the same topic. Yes. It is indeed the same topic. Thank you very much.